Okay, the live is up. Sergeants, will you start your recordings? PC recording is underway. Okay. Cloud is up and running. Backup is rolling. And Keith, will you start with the opening statement? Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome to the remote hearing on subcommittee on landmarks, public sightings, and disposition. Will council members and staff please turn on a video at this time? Once again, will council members and staff Please turn on a video at this time. Thank you. To minimize disruption, please place all cell phones and electronics to vibrate. You may send your testimony at land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Once again, that's land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Chair Rowley, we are ready to begin. Thank you, Sergeant. Good afternoon. I am Council Member Kevin Rowley, Chair of the Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Sightings, and Dispositions. I am joined remotely today by Council Member Barron, Council Member Kuhl, Council Member Traeger, and Council Member Rivera. Today we'll be hearing five HPD applications the Harlem Open Door Cluster, Harlem NCP, Harlem Infill NCP, Harlem NCP Western Site, and the Lower East Side Cluster. But first, we will vote on LU 730, the Sutter Avenue East New York Partnership Home application submitted by the Department of Housing Preservation and Development pursuant to Article 16 of the General Municipal Law. The application requests waiver of the designation requirements of Section 693 of the General Municipal Law and the requirements of 197C and 197D of the New York City Charter and approval of the project as an urban development action area, project for property located at block 4049, part of lot 25 in Brooklyn Council District represented by Council Member Barron. This application will facilitate the convenience of a small interior lot to the adjacent affordable housing development. At this time, I would like to ask my colleague, Council Member Barron, she has any remarks on regarding this project. Councilmember Barron, do you have any? Do you want to give any remarks? You're on mute. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I uh, just want to say that I am in favor of the conveyance of this property. It's about 424 square feet, and my understanding is that at the time the lots were drawn. Uh, it was not assigned to either of the lots that does that that have housing on them, and that this is a technicality which will assign the property to the um, Nehemiah project, who will then assign it to the homeowner. So, with that understanding, with the understanding that the homeowner is in agreement with this provision, I am in support of this of this project, this conveyance, and I ask my fellow colleagues to vote in the affirmative on this project. Thank you, Council Member Barron. And just Thank want you. to take a small uh, time to uh, celebrate International Women's Day. Uh, just want to celebrate all the women on this call and thank you for your services today. Um, Council, please call for root roll. Riley. Yes. Ku. Please I, unmute the council members for their vote. Thank you, Mr. Council Member Koo. Can you hear me? Aye. Yes. Council Member Barron. I vote aye. And Council Member Traeger. Oh, unmute. Council Member Traeger, please. That's an aye. That's an aye. <laughs> That's an I. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Council Member. By a vote of four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and with zero abstentions, LU 730 is recommended for approval to the full land use committee, and the vote is held open. Thank you, Council. We will now move on to our public hearing. I recognize the subcommittee council again to review today's hearing procedures. Thank you, Chair Riley. I am Jeffrey Campagna, counsel to this subcommittee. Members of the public who wish to testify were asked to register for today's hearing. 
If you wish to testify and have not registered, please go to www.council.nyc.gov to sign up now. If you are a member of the public who wants to watch this hearing, please watch the hearing on the New York City Council website. All people testifying before the subcommittee will be on mute until they are recognized to testify. When the chair recognizes you, please confirm that your mic is unmuted before you begin speaking. Public testimony will be limited to two minutes per witness. If you have any additional testimony you would like the subcommittee to consider, or if you have written testimony you would like to submit in lieu of appearing before the subcommittee, you can email it to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Please indicate the LU number or project name in the subject of the email. During the hearing, council members who would like to ask questions should use the Zoom raise hand function. The raise hand button should appear at the bottom of the participant panel. I will announce council members who have questions in the order that they raise their hands. Witnesses are reminded to remain in the meeting until they are excused by the chair. Lastly, there may be extended pauses if we encounter technical problems. We ask that you be patient as we work through these issues. Chair Riley will now continue with today's agenda items. Thank you, Council. We will now hear applications for four projects in Manhattan Council District represented by Council Member Perkins. All four projects were submitted by the De Department of Housing Preservation and Development pursuant to Article 16 of the General Municipal Law and Section 19C of the New York City Charter, requesting approval of the designation of four different urban development action areas in four urban development action area projects and dispositions of city-owned properties for such areas. We will hear all four applications pre-considered. We will hear application number C-200 and 276 CAM for a Harlem open door cluster. This application concerns property located at 2735 Frederick Douglass Boulevard, 2752 Frederick Douglass Boulevard, 131 West 133rd Street, and 130 West 134th Street in Manhattan Community Board District 10. This application will facilitate the construction of four new affordable home ownership buildings with a total of approximately 448 units. In connection with this project, we will also hear application number 20215017HAM submitted pursuant to Article 11 of Private Housing Finance Law for approval of related tax exemption. We will also hear application C200277HAM, the Harlem NCBCB 11 site for property located at 2 East 130th Street, also in Manhattan Community District 11. This application will facilitate the construction of one four-story affordable rental building with seven units. We will hear application number C, 200 HAM, the Central Harlem Infill NCP project for properties located at 2803 Frederick Douglass Boulevard, 136 West 137th Street, 203 West 135th Street, 61 West 130, 130th Street, 142 West 129th Street and 109 West 126th Street in Manhattan Community District 10. The application will facilitate, to de facilitate the development of five new six-story buildings and one new four-story building, all of which will, fully, will be fully affordable rental buildings containing a total of 58 units. We will also hear application number C200 and 279 HAM, the Harlem NCP Western Site for property located at 313 West 112th Street in Manhattan Community District 10. This application will facilitate the development of one four-story affordable rental building with seven units. Council, please call the applicant panel. The applicant panel for the, these applications includes Libby Rolfing, Vianda Simmons, Philippe Cortez, Joan Huang, Joyce Kwan, and Luliana Sanchez, all for HPD, and Ken Morrison, Emmanuel Gillen, and Matt Melody for the developers. Council, please administer the affirmation. Panelists, please raise your right hands. And if you could, one at a time, state your names. Please unmute the applicants. Re please be patient while we do that.
Uh, Kenneth Morrison. Felipe Cortez. Joyce Kwan. Oh. Joyce Kwan. Libby Rolfing. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee and an answer to all council member questions? I do. I do. Yeah. Mr. Riley. Thank you. Before you begin, please state your name and affiliation again for the record. You may begin. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Elizabeth Rolfing. I'm the chief of staff with the New York City Department of Housing Preservation and Development. And I'll, I'll begin with the testimony now. This land use item is related to the urban land use review process applications seeking urban development action area designation, disposition, and project approval for 12 scattered city owned vacant lots located across the central and East Harlem neighborhoods of Manhattan's community districts 10 and 11 within Council District 9. The sponsors of the project, Lamore Development Group and Iris Development, were selected through HPD's 2015 NIHOP NCP RFQ competitive process. This RFQ process was issued to advance new construction projects on small and hard to develop infill city owned sites and to help build capacity for smaller groups citywide. The sponsors have proposed to develop these 12 scattered city owned vacant lots under HPD's new construction program or NCP and open door program. The 12 scattered city owned vacant lots were clustered under the central Harlem infill NCP and open door project, which has been divided into two clusters. The Central Harlem Infill NCP cluster, which we'll refer to as cluster one, and this includes three of the land use items, C200277 HAM, C200278 HAM, and C200279 HAM. And separately, there is a Central Harlem Infill Open Door cluster, which we'll refer to as cluster two, and that includes land use item C200276 HAM. Cluster one is comprised of eight city owned vacant lots and will be developed with eight new construction buildings containing approximately 71 affordable rental units plus one superintendent unit affordable to households earning incomes between 30% and 80% of area median income. Under the new construction um, program, sponsors purchase city owned or privately owned land or vacant buildings and construct multifamily buildings in order to create up to 45 units of rental housing on infill sites affordable to families earning up to 80% of AMI. Cluster one is expected to provide a mix of 31 studio, 38 one bedroom and three three bedroom apartments. 10% of the units will be set aside for the homeless. Income tiers include 0%, 30%, 40%, 50% and 70% of AMI and rents will range from $403 for a studio at the lowest AMI tier to $2,129 for a three bedroom unit at the highest AMI tier. Amenities for cluster one include common rooms in four buildings and laundry rooms and bike storage in all of the buildings. Cluster two is comprised of four city owned vacant lots and will be developed with four new construction buildings containing approximately 48 affordable home ownership co-op units affordable to households earning incomes between 80% and 130% of AMI under HPD's open door program. Cluster two includes one building with ground floor retail space. The open door program, um, through this program, HPD sponsors, um, sponsors purchase city owned or privately owned land and construct cooperative buildings affordable to moderate and middle income households. Cluster two is expected to provide one studio, 21 bedroom, 23 two bedroom and four three bedroom apartments. The open door units will be marketed to households earning income between 80% and 130% of AMI. Sales prices are projected to range between $206,099 for a studio unit at the 80% AMI tier and $540,010 for a three bedroom unit at the 130% AMI tier. Amenities for cluster two include common rooms and three buildings, in unit, built-in washer and dryer, and bike storage. 
Once completed, the cooperative will sell the units to households who agree to own or occupy their homes for the length of the regulatory period. As part of the open door program, the purchaser will be required to abide by resale restrictions. If the homeowner sells or refinances during the regulatory period, the homeowner may realize up to 2% appreciation on the original purchase price per year of owner occupancy. Additionally, the homeowner will also be required to sell to a household earning no more than the project's income limit. In addition to approval of the four ULERP applications, HBD seeks approval of Article 11 tax benefits for Cluster 2 in order to help maintain affordability for these homeownership co-op units. The term of the tax exemption will be 40 years, and that will be coterminous with the regulatory agreement. The tax benefit is approximately $5,879,432 with a net present value of $1,750,702. Today, HBD is before the subcommittee seeking approval of the Central Harlem Infill NCP and Open Door Project in order to facilitate construction of this affordable rental and homeownership project. Thank you very much. And with that, I would like to turn things over to our development partners. Um, I think that's Ken Morrison. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I just want to check Joan. I know we have a slide. Will you put it up? Actually, I believe the council can, there you go. There you go, okay. Uh, good afternoon, council members. And we thank you for giving us the opportunity to present this project, which we believe will be transformative for the Central Harlem community. My name is Kenneth Morrison, one of the principals of Lamar Development Group. We are a second generation MBE, MBE affordable housing developer located in Harlem. I'm joined today by my joint venture partner, Emmanuel Gillen, who is one of the principals of Iris Development, an MBWE sustainable and affordable housing developer based in New Orleans with an office also here in Harlem. The architect on the project is Curtis and Gisberg Architects, a New York City based WE architecture firm. Uh, and just for clarification, the architect is not going to be in today's presentation. Uh, the uh, next slide, please. Uh, Joan, did you want to talk about the RFQ process or do you want me to, to handle it? Sure, I can. Um, thank you, Ken. I think, uh, um, also, thank you, Libby. Um, I know she also mentioned about, briefly mentioned about this, but I can um, just also uh, mention about uh, the background here. So the Central Holland um, NCP and Open Door Cluster, um, as mentioned before, is a, a scattered site comp uh, comprised of 12 uh, sites throughout the Central Holland and the one site located in the East Harlem. So um, the, develop, uh, the development team was selected in 2017 through the RFQ, um, through the HPD 2015 Night Hub and NCP RFQ uh, competitive process. Um, so this project has been presented to community board 10 and 11 several times in 2019 and the 2020 during the pre-Europe and the Europe process. And city planning committee had its vote on March 3rd, I believe so last week. Uh, the project received a, a full support from the CPC. Next slide, please. Um, so this project was a uh, certified on October 5th, uh, 2020. And we are seeking your approval for the disposition of a city owned land to facilitate the development, development of approximately uh, 120 units, including 72 rental and 48 home ownership units. So uh, now I will turn the presentation over to Ken uh, to provide a further detail about this project. Thank you, Joan. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, actually, we could go to the next slide after this. Thank you. So there are, as has been stated, there are 12 sites in total, 11 are in community board 10, one is in community board 11, all sites are in council district number nine. These 12 sites are all vacant properties and vary in size from 16 feet, eight inches to 33 feet, three inches. They are primarily clustered around the 135th Street and 145th, 145th Street train stations. Next slide, please. Of the 12 sites, four are slated for home ownership and are designated on this chart in green um, and listed uh, in the box uh, where it says open door. 
The remaining eight are designated for MCP or rental, uh, and they are in blue and on in, in the various boxes where it says MCP. Next slide, please. Uh, the development overview. There will be, all the properties will be residential usage only except for at 2735 Federal Dulles Boulevard. There will be one small commercial space there. Three of the buildings will be four stories. Seven will be six story buildings and there will be one 10 story building. We are not seeking any upzoning or variances as all properties will be built as of right. The entire development will be enterprise green compliant. Next slide. We plan on using two financial executions for the development of these sites. For the eight rental properties, we anticipate using HPD's NCP term sheet, neighborhood construction program, which allows for the financing of smaller new construction affordable housing projects. And these units will be affordable to families whose incomes fall between 30 to 80% of AMIs. The second execution we anticipate using will be HPD's open door program, which creates affordable home ownership opportunities for families whose income levels fall between 80% to 120% of the area medium incomes. Uh, next slide. Here we have the open door affordability and unit mix. So the, of the 72, uh, I'm gonna start with the rental portion first, the NCP of the 72 apartments, 71 will go to market. It will be one super unit. 12 of the units will be at 30% of AMI. 12 will be at 40%, 12 will be at 50%, 12 will be at 70%, and the remaining 23 will be at 80% AMI. The unit mix will comprise of 31 studios, 38 one bedrooms, and three three bedrooms. In regards to the open door program for the for sale, 12 of the units will be between 80 and 90% AMI, 12 at 90 to 110, and then uh, the remaining 24 at 110 to 120. And the unit mix there will be, there will be one studio, two, 21 bedrooms, 23 two bedrooms, and four three bedrooms. Next slide, please. Here we show the actual AMI levels uh, uh, for each, uh, well, the income for each AMI level. Please note that 10% of the units will, in the rental portion will be given to or slated for the formerly homeless. Um, the income levels at 30% of AMI, the incomes will be between 23,880 to 34,110. And I'll just jump to the 80% AMI, which will be the highest uh, between 63,680 to 90,960. So basically we'll be covering incomes between 23,880 up to 90,960. In regards to the open door, there were three income levels. Um, the lowest income would be at 90,960 and the highest will be at 147,810. Uh, next slide, please. Here we do just a deeper dive into the affordability mix. So uh, just wanted to give you an idea of what the actual rents would be for uh, some of the units. So if we were to start at the lowest AMI levels, a studio will rent as low as 397, uh, a one bedroom at 503, a three bedroom at 683. And if we were to jump over to the highest AMI level under the rentals, uh, the lowest rent for a studio will be 1250 and the higher rent will be 2161 for the three bedroom. Um, all other AMIs will fall in between those two. Uh, in regards to the open door, the uh, in regards to the affordability of the open door, just wanted to point out the anticipated monthly maintenances for these units. Uh, the studio at 415, um, the one bedroom between 521 and 652, the two bedrooms between 555 and 824, and the three bedrooms at 1111 would be the maintenances. And we also show the, the initial sales prices um, for the studios. They start at 206099 and they go as high uh, for the three bedrooms, 540 and uh, 540,010. Next slide, please. On this site, I'm sorry, on this slide, there are seven, uh, seven photos of the current situation or current condition of these sites. Most of these sites are uh, on the middle of the blocks. I mean, currently they're all vacant, fenced off, and they're not being used. Next slide. Uh, here we show what we call uh, uh, the wide site floor plan. And it has been mentioned, uh, some of the amenities, uh, elevated access to all floors, uh, uh, all buildings are handicap accessible, on-site laundry, 
uh, a common lounge room in the, in the wider buildings, bicycle storage, uh, individual heating and cooling systems, and ample natural daylight um, throughout all the bedrooms and living rooms. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is a sample typical floor plan for our narrow site buildings. Uh, the first floor unit will be handicap accessible. Uh, there will be on-site laundry, uh, bike storage, uh, also ample light. Uh, the only difference here is that since we don't have the width, there won't be the, the common lounge area that you've seen in the other buildings, in the wider buildings. Uh, next slide. Sustainability. So all buildings we built will be built to enterprise green community standards. All units will be energy efficient with heating and cooling systems, energy efficient LED lights, uh, water conservation fixtures, uh, fully insulated building envelope using only low VOC paints, sealants, and adhesives, a high reflective uh, cool roof systems, um, and native planted, plantings at building footages or frontages that are provided. Uh, next slide, please. So here we want to talk about the, uh, the appearance and, and materials that we plan on using. So as you can imagine, we're on basically almost 12 different blocks. So each block has a different kind of streetscape and there was a lot of uh, concern and conversations from the community board around this. So what we did was we went on each block and just kind of and here we show examples of two blocks, two buildings, I'm sorry, two blocks where we took pictures of the adjacent properties and we wanted to be, make sure that we were contextual. So this is what it would look like. Uh, the street, streetscape will look like once construction is done for two of the sites that's on you know, East 130th Street and also on West 133rd. Uh, next slide, please. Here, we also did the same thing. This is one of the narrow sites, uh, 109 West 126th Street. Here, we took a little bit of liberty with the exterior um, as we're about 50 feet away from the corner and on the corner of 126 and Lenox, there is this colorful motif. So we decided to try and to render, uh, to match that, the color scheme. Next slide. Um, and this next slide just looks at the two taller buildings at 2752 Frederick Douglass Boulevard. We have a six story building um, in the middle of the block. And then uh, at 150th Street, I'm sorry, 100, uh, I think this is 146 at 2735 Frederick Douglass. This is our 10 story building. And we anticipate using a local artist to, to assist us with the upper portion of the exterior of the building. Next slide. And that uh, ends our presentation. Myself, Emmanuel, and the staff here at HPD were uh, here to answer any questions. And thank you very much. Thank you. And we were just joined by Council Member Miller. I just wanted to give him a chance to give a vote on LU 730. Council Member Miller, how do you vote on LU 730? The Cetera of East New York uh, application. Councilmember Miller? Is he still here? No, he's there. I think he's muted. You're muted, Councilmember Miller. Okay, I, I vote aye. Okay, okay, that's five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and with zero abstentions, the item is approved and recommended to the full land use committee. And uh, let's continue. Thank you, council. Um, thank you uh, to the panelists for that presentation. I just have one question and that really, uh, that goes for the, the last um, slide, I believe you were referring to the building. Uh, I know city plan commissioners were, were wary about including public art on the front of the buildings. And how are you responding to those comments? Ken, Ken, you're on mute. There you go. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry, I wasn't able to unmute myself. Yeah, yep, so sure, if there, if there is an issue uh, with that, like I said, we just took a little bit of liberty with it because we were trying to you know, match the corner motif. Uh, but I mean, if there's an issue with it, there was no problem with us just sticking to a, a one color uh, on the facade of the property. Okay. And you will be having a local artist uh, do the building, if I'm not mistaken, correct? That's, that is correct. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. I now invite my colleagues to ask questions. Council, are there any council members with any questions? Mr. Chair? Councilmember Miller? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. 
So um, I have a question to Mr. Morrison and his team here, just to, as a, a point of clarification. Is, is this the, and, and perhaps even HPD can answer, is this by virtue, these projects, by virtue of the uh, RFP, RFQs that went out, I guess in 17, uh, there was a number of them toward MWBE developers. So I can, I'll, I'll, I'll no. So I, I will say that this RFP was not part of the MBWE RFPs in 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe the MCP and HPD can correct me if I'm incorrect, but I believe it was called the NIHOP MCP RFP. And I believe it was issued in 2014. Okay, so this is a total separate project. Total separate project, correct. Okay, good. Um, okay, I have no further questions. Thank you. Good to see you. Same here, Janique. I'm a council member. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Take care. All right. Thank you, Council Member Miller. There being no more questions for this panel, this panel is excused. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> council, are there any members of the public who wish to testify on this item? Jeff, you're on mute. There are no members of the public signed up to testify on this item. There being no other members of the public who wish to testify on this item, the public hearings on application number C200276 HAM, 202150017 HAM, C200277 HAM, C200278 HAM, and C200279 HAM are now closed and items are laid over. Our last public hearing today will be on LU741, the Lower East Side Cluster, ANCP. This is an application submitted by HPD pursuant to Article 16 of the General Municipal Law and Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law, requesting waiver of, of the area designate, designation requirement and the requirement of Charter Section 197C and 197D, and approval of the Urban Development Action Area Project, an exemption from real property taxation for properties located at 406-08 East 10th Street, 533 East 11th Street, and 6 656 East 12th Street in Manhattan Council District represented by Council Member Rivera. This application will facilitate the preservation of 44 affordable cooperative units pursuant to the Affordable Neighborhood Cooperative Program, ANCP. Um, before we call the council, I just want to give Council Member Rivera a chance if she wants to give any remarks regarding this project. Uh, Chair Riley, thank you so much. I'm going to forego a, a statement and hear from the applicants and then maybe ask a couple questions. Thank you. Thank you. Council, please call on the applicant panel. The applicant panel is Libby Rolfing, Christina Retzlap O'Connell, and Brian Dennis for HPD, and Nelson Chan and Andrea Alexopoulos for the developer. Council, please administer the affirmation. Uh, panelists, please raise your hands if you have not already been sworn in. Please say your names. Christine Retzlaff O'Connell. Nelson Chan. Andrea Alexopoulos. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee and an answer to all council member questions? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Before you begin, please state your name and affiliation again for the record. And before we begin, I just want to acknowledge we're, we're joined by Council Member Perkins. You may begin, panel. Great, thank you, and good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Libby Rolfing, and I'm with the New York City Department of Housing and Preservation and Development. Um, today's land use item consists of the proposed disposition of three partially occupied city-owned buildings and the approval of Article 11 tax benefits for properties located at 40608 East 10th Street, 533 East 11th Street, and 656 East 12th Street in Manhattan Council District 3, known as the Lower East Side Cluster, 
The buildings will be developed through HPD's Affordable Neighborhood Cooperative Program, or ANCP. Under the program guidelines, city-owned multiple dwellings are conveyed to Restoring Communities HTFC for $1 per tax lot and then rehabilitated by private developers selected through a competitive process. The developer will sign a site development and management agreement with Restoring Communities that will be in effect until co-op conversion occurs and title transfers from Restoring Communities HTFC to the individual cooperative. From the time of the cooperative conversion, the developer will remain the property manager for at least one year. After the first year, the co-op will have the choice of keeping the developer as property manage manager or hiring a new company approved by HPD. All of the buildings entered into city ownership through an in-rem foreclosure process and joined the tenant interim lease program as early as the mid-1990s. As part of the TILP program, tenants are required to form tenant associations to self-manage their buildings, which includes collecting rents under a net lease agreement with HPD. The cluster is comprised of 44 units and the residents are ready to move forward with the next steps in cooperative conversion under HPD's ANCP pro program. The designated developer, Asian Americans for Equality, has been selected to develop the site. The three buildings in this cluster will require a substantial rehabilitation that includes structural joint replacement, replacement of building systems, including electrical upgrades, plumbing upgrades, and the installation of new boilers. Additionally, work to the envelope of the building is needed, including new windows, new roofs, and masonry repair. The scope of work also includes new bathrooms and kitchen fixtures, entry doors, new flooring, new mailboxes, hallway upgrades, painting, and asbestos and lead removal. Units will also be brought into compliance with current 2014 building codes and ADA accessibility requirements. Additionally, 5% of units will be renovated with accessibility for mobility and 2% for hearing and visually impaired households. Post rehab, the 44 residential units will include five studios, one one bedroom, 23 two bedrooms, 14 th three bedrooms, and one four bedroom apartments. Of the 44 units, 23 units will be occupied by returning shareholders and 21 units will be vacant for marketing. There will be three commercial spaces, two at 40608 East 10th Street and one at 656 East 12th Street. Household incomes for existing tenants range between a reported 5% of area median income to 42% of AMI. And the cooperative interests attributable to occupied apartments will be sold to the existing tenants for $2,500. Maintenance will be set at 40% of AMI for existing tenants. The monthly rent for each unit for existing tenants is anticipated to be roughly 866 per one bedroom, $1,033 per two bedroom, $1,186 per three bedroom and $1,315 per four bedroom apartment. The cooperative interest attributable to vacant apartments will be sold for a price affordable to families earning no more than 110% of the area median income. In addition to seeking disposition approval for the Lower East Side ANCP cluster, HPD requests a 40 year article 11 tax exemption in order to help the shareholders maintain affordability. The term of the tax exemption will be coterminous with the regulatory agreement and the total tax benefit is approximately $8,432,696 with a net present value of $2,355,853. In order to facilitate development of the Lower East Side ANCP cluster, HPD seeks approval of this land use item. Thank you. Um, and with that, I would like to turn things over to the to Afi, to, to Nelson Chan. Good afternoon, council members, and thank you for your time. Uh, my name is Nelson Chan. I'm the director for the real estate uh, development team over at Asian Americans for Equality, or Afi for short. I'm very happy to see so many familiar faces because I, um, I was at HPD for, for about four years prior to rejoining Afi. And uh, for those of you who do not know AFI, AFI is a 45-year-old nonprofit community organization founded in the civil rights movement uh, in Chinatown. Our organization was born out of a, a grassroots group fighting to get local workers access to construction jobs, uh, uh, 
government developmental sites, um, and we've been fighting for equal opportunities and equal rights in New York City and New York uh, ever since then. Uh, uh, our services span from safety net social services uh, to neighborhood small business support and ownership, uh, home ownership counseling and affordable housing rehab and development. Uh, we are deeply committed to preserving affordable housing throughout New York City and providing new opportunities for our city's uh, diverse communities. And just want to add that the tenants have been uh, for these clusters uh, have been waiting a long time for this opportunity um, to be a co-op and they have been cooperative with us and also with HPD and we're confident of uh, this. It's a, a success and we're happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, panel. Um, I just have one question. I know that there was a restaurant uh, located at one of the buildings. I just want you to speak about um, preserving the restaurant's business um, after this cooperative comes into the neighborhood. Sure. Um, so my name is Christine Retzloff O'Connor. I'm the director for the Affordable Neighborhood Cooperative Program at HPD. Um, AFI has been very hands-on in terms of working directly with the, the existing business. Um, and we are crafting um, some, some language to be able to share with that restaurant owner to ensure that they have the right of first refusal once the, um, the work is done. Um, they are a pillar in the community. They, they work with a lot of residents within the buildings. And so it is very important that they have a right to return. Um, and that they are able to return with a very affordable rent to ensure that they can remain a pillar in the community. Thank you, Christine. And just wanted to add that AFI has been working in tandem with this uh, restaurant owner in terms of design as well to make sure that the space is uh, works with his restaurant when he should he return. Will he be? Um, will the restaurant lose any square feet um, with the new building going up? Or well, we're doing a a rehab, so it will be code compliant. Um, and this was, um, you know, told to the the tenant there. Okay. All right. Thank you. I now invite my colleagues. Um, if my colleagues have any questions, Councilmember Rivera. Thank you so much for allowing me to just ask a couple of quick questions. And I know you covered some of it in the opening, but just, you know, forgive the redundancy just so we can get it on the record. And thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, for allowing me the time. Uh, so what percentage of area median income AMI will the vacant units be targeted at? Um, so the vacant apartments will be sold at prices uh, at 95% of area median income. Um, that's based on the specific finances of this project, which is calculated based on returning number of returning residents, available vacant apartments, the cost of rehab. So every project is a little different, but we are targeting 95% AMI for the vacant apartments. Um, during the testimony, you may have heard that um, incomes will be capped at 110% of area median income. So what that means is we will set a price at 95% of area median income, and we will market the vacant apartments to families between 95 and 110. So how does this compare to the typical AMI targets for the ANCP program? Our term sheet allows for affordability between 80% and 120%. So we're right in the middle pretty much. Okay. What are the, I know we mentioned uh, the restaurant, but what are the three commercial businesses on these properties? Are they all active? Only the restaurant remains. There are two other spaces that are currently vacant. Um, AFI will work with the tenant bodies of each building to, to bring in a viable commercial tenant for those other two spaces once the work is done. Okay, so that's helpful. And I know that you just mentioned to the chair that you were um, in touch with the restaurant and, and you certainly code compliance is one of the priorities, but can you describe the outreach that has been done to that commercial business and also any of the outreach 
um, that has been done to the tenants to really kind of explain their rights, what to expect, and certainly, I guess, like timeline and any relevant details. Sure. So in turn, I'll, I'll speak in terms of the, the resident body and I'll let Afi manage the, uh, res, uh, the commercial tenant. Um, so as part of ANCP, we engage with residents a lot. These are, these are residents of city-owned buildings. They've been waiting for this opportunity a very long time. One, we have a, uh, what's called a, a pre-engagement meeting where we let them know how the program works and how they'll be involved. Then we have a kickoff meeting where Afi was actually introduced um, we did that back in 2017. From there, we have a series of meetings where we go through plans. So every single resident receives a side-by-side -side plan of their existing unit and then the, the proposed rehab of the unit so that they can see if there's any differences based on code compliance. Um, we also have a meeting with residents right before we close on the construction loan and start the work where we share with them a budget and talk about what their maintenance fees will be when the work is done. Um, we, we understand that these folks are gonna be homeowners. So it's important for them to understand what the budget is, how it impacts them um, and how they will be able to afford the, the new maintenance once it goes into effect after the work is done. Happy, I'll let you talk about the commercial tenant. Yeah, so for the commercial tenant, we actually um, reached out to the commercial tenant um, often, and then he actually today he submitted a, a letter for support. I'm not sure if uh, we were we sent that over to um, Councilwoman Rivera, but um, if I may, I I, th I have it in front of me. I can sort of present it to you know read it into the testimony if you would like, or if you have the um, that available. We, I, I think I'll defer to the chair, but I believe you could start. Yes, of course, of course, go ahead. Okay. Uh, apologies, I'm gonna need a second before I can open this up. Um, but yes, um, we, we've been in, in contact with everyone in, in the building and everyone knows that um, that cooperation is the key thing and just to get everyone in this cluster to cooperate to agree with the milestones was a very um, instrumental for us and we rely on everyone to, to do that. Um, AFI is actually the, the group that closed the first ANCP uh, years ago and we were able to convert that and we found that the success, the recipe for success was actually um, to to have many touch points and many communications and often as well. Um, so I, sorry, I apologize. I'm struggling to to find. Can, can maybe you could just submit it for the record and then. Yeah, you know, we, we do have some time between today and the final like vote. So if you could just submit that for the record, it, mean, it means a lot. I, I trust that it's a lot of support. Um, so just, I guess, one last question, Mr. Chip, that's okay. Um, what is the plan uh, for the businesses in the proposed development? So you discussed um, you're working closely with the restaurant owner and that you're going to work with the residents to try to bring in a viable operator so that way they can have that source of revenue. Uh, but what, what, what's the plan? Generally what happens is once the building is about 90% complete and we feel pretty confident that we're, we're gonna get the sign offs and, and be able to bring people back into the building, um, AFI will work with the residents and identify some of their, their, their no list. Um, every group tenants may have a preference for what kind of business they wanna have in place. They may have seen um, a type of business not work out before. Um, and so they'll give their recommendations. Um, AFI actually has previously coordinated this um, as, as Nelson mentioned on the first ANCP. Um, a, a marketing took place, several qualified vendors applied um, and working with the tenant body, a specific vendor was selected, one that had a, um, a sturdy financial track record, um, what would be an asset to the community, an asset to the building. Um, and then that, that vendor moved in under a lease that was approved by HPD and also negotiated with the tenants. And 
if I may, I actually just have the, the letter open. So it will take me about a minute to read this. Go um, ahead, Nelson. Thank you. It says, Dear Honorable City Council, Hi, my name is Pedro Rodriguez, and I am both a tenant in the building located at 406-08 East 10th Street and a small business restaurant owner. On behalf of the families in the building and the Our Tenant Association, we are in full support of AFI working with us to develop our future homes through the ANC program. AFI has been coordinating with us regarding our unit layouts and the program milestones. AFI has been fully engaged with us to make sure we understand the timeline every step of the way. We have been waiting for decades for this opportunity and we are excited it is finally here. AFI has been very transparent and regularly, regularly communicating with us. As long-term residents or as long-term tenants of this neighborhood, we are thrilled for this opportunity and in full support of this project. Sincerely, Pedro Rodriguez. And I will submit that as well. Thank you, Nelson. Councilmember Rivera, do you have any more questions? Pretty good, pretty good letter. Um, well, thank you. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. That certainly means a lot because I know not only is it an important business, but like you said, they employ people from the community and they're very involved as a tenant association. So I think that's all the questions I have, uh, Mr. Chair. I know we'll certainly be in discussions on the AMI and, and uh, how we can proceed in, in pushing this application forward responsibly. And I wanna thank you for your testimony. And of course, to you, Mr. Chair, for allowing me to ask a few questions. Thank you, Council Member Rivera. There being no more questions for this panel, this panel is excused. Thank you. Thank you. Council, are there any members of the public who wish to testify on this item? There are no members of the public signed up to testify on this item. There being no other members of the public who wish to testify on this item, the public hearing on LU741 is now closed and the item is laid over. That concludes today's business. I remind you that if you have written testimony on today's item, you may submit it to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Excuse me. Please indicate the LU number or the project name in the subject heading. I would like to thank the applicants, members of the public, my colleagues, subcommittee council, land use staff, and Sergeant at Arms for participating in today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned and happy.